The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over the world of bread and bread flour, as well as four things that we've never done or stopped doing in the garden. Our guest is author and garden columnist Steve Bender, and your garden questions will get answered. The hour is full. Come join us. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to another edition of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. So happy you've taken time out of your day to be part of the program, to listen and enjoy and learn. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. If you want to be part of the program, a participation is appreciated and encouraged. You can send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you would like to communicate with us via your voice, you can give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-SHOW. 1-800-927-7469. Toll free, coast to coast. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with the versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. And we're going to talk about the world of bread and bread flour, Holly. And <clears throat> many people, you know, it used to be people would make their own bread at home, and some still do, but the convenience of multiple different varieties uh, of bread at the grocery store seems to be more appealing. And there's a lot of different flours flour, F-L-O-U-R, than one might think. You know, all-purpose flour, all-purpose, used for everything. But there is, like, dozens of different types of flour. Absolutely. And there's, um, yeah, so we're going to talk about all-purpose flour and then versus bread flour. There's also cake flour. Cake flour has typically, you can kind of make your own because it has typically the addition of some baking soda or baking powder, depending on, I think, on the manufacturer. Um, but it is a little bit of a lighter flour, the baking flour. And many people, or cake, I mean, cake flour. Did I say cake flour? You just did. Okay. <laughs> cake flour. A lot of people use that with cakes because of the additional... Um, lift. Lift. That let it give the, uh, the, it the batter. It gives a nice fluffy cake. Right. Which is what you want. So, with that being said, all-purpose flour, you can use that to make cakes. You can use that to make all sorts of baked goods. However, people if, are... If you use the right flour for the right purpose, it changes the whole premise of how good the thing is that you're making. Absolutely. And a lot of times, if it says to sift the flour... A lot of people do skip that step and it can make a difference. And it seems like, I don't know. uh, What what is the purpose of sifting the flour? Is that just to make sure? It puts air into it. Air to it and then make sure everything's broke apart. There's no clumps or anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, So that's one thing. And then, so then there's bread flour. And my friend and I, back in, at the end of 2020, we decided to. We don't talk about that year. We don't. Okay. (laughs) I think that was the end of 2020. Pretty sure. Um, we decided to together, but virtually, make make ciabatta bread. And ciabatta bread is a whole process. It is you almost do make a mother dough like a sourdough, but it's a little. It's not quite as intense as making um, the uh, what's the name of sourdough? The starter. Starter. Yeah, not quite as an intense process, but it does. It does. Did take like forty eight hours altogether. And he only used all purpose flour, and I. Read the recipe and I got bread flour specifically for it, but that's okay. And his turned out a lot more um, 
dense flat yeah dense and flat and mine turned out like how i wanted it to the ciabatta style well, bread. with the all-purpose flour isn't it can you can get bleached and unbleached that's another aspect of the flour procedure too I'm not really sure if that makes a huge difference, but well, some people is, may think bleached. Oh, that that's a bad word because that might that's a chemical. It's just a, yeah, it's yeah. just a process. I know it's process. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, bread flour has so the reason why they say to use bread flour versus all-purpose flour when baking bread, bread flour has a higher protein content, so ranging from twelve to fourteen percent more, which makes the bread. Um, just basically, it provides more elasticity, having that protein in there, and it also allows the dough to expand and trap the carbon, di- carbon dioxide process better um, during the fermentation. To get that bread texture, that fluffiness in the air pockets in there to do all that so it's not a brick. Right. People don't realize like how scientific baking is. Um you are working with these raw ingredients and then you are transforming them and you transforming them in, them in a proper way to get your end goal. Boom. And, well, that looks like three quarters of a cup. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't, right. doesn't end well. Baking really is a science. And not that cooking is, isn't, like especially if you're making something like a roux or a bechamel sauce where you do have to combine the right ingredients to create that sauce and you can easily overcook it or undercook it. But for the most part, if you're just... Not to discredit any sort of cooking, but if you're sauteing veggies in a pan, it's a lot less chance you can mess it up than making a proper sourdough or even ciabatta or even just some bread. Right. Because yeah. if you do it wrong, you take that uh, brick that you've baked and you put it behind the wheel of the wagon so it doesn't roll down the hill type of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you put it with your, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe some in-laws that you don't like or something. Uh, they can yeah, get them to bread. leave quicker. Here's some bread for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. watch them gnaw through it. Yeah. So, so anyway, if you are going to make bread, bread flour is the way to go. Now, more and more people are going gluten free for whatever reason. I uh, what, what is gotta, okay? What is gluten for? Gluten is a protein. It, in bread. It's the protein, and and some in certain procedures they remove that portion off of the grain in order to get it gluten free. No. Or how does that work? No. Okay. You just use a different type of flour. Okay. Because the gluten is part of the grain itself in the wheat process. Is that what we're getting too deep in? Is I, it? Yeah. But, you're getting a little deep. Um, I'm not, but, but I'm not people a, have glu- not a bread scientist. But people have gluten allergies. Yeah, absolutely. And some people have gluten sensitivities. And they may not even know why right. they are, and they just keep eating you know, bread things. And like, I keep feeling bad, but I like the bread. That could be... <laughs> No, I mean people don't know, people don't put it together. Right. But they keep having they keep having the same issues, but the diet doesn't change, so the issues never change as well. Yeah, and you can develop these issues throughout your life. Right. Yeah. And some people are born that way, so it just kind of depends. But anyway, so gluten free flours have have now become uh, more readily available, along with gluten free breads and baked goods. Oh, you can get and, this online anywhere. Right. Um, so it's recommended to use, if you're going to replace your bread with your own homemade gluten-free bread, um, you want to use either oat flour, sorghum, or buckwheat. And I know it's, you're thinking, okay, if there's gluten in wheat, isn't that in buckwheat? But buckwheat is different. Different type of grain. Different type of grain. You would know, right? Yes. Yes. So oat flour. But, however, I guess there's this thing with oat flour where you have to make sure it's gluten-free because... I forget certain um, varieties. Certain varieties of have, oats, yeah, can contain, can, yeah, yeah, can get cross contaminated. So you got to keep that in mind. So a lot of times you need to add a protein of some sort um, to get it to bind. And a lot of times it's going to be egg. Otherwise, people do add things like xanthan gum and even physelium husk. However, stick with the egg is what you're saying. I mean, <laughs> yes and no. Phycelium husk is... But if you're vegan or... or yeah, I guess it, is it... Or if they'll add flaxseed too. Right. If they don't want to eat an animal thing, Pro- like product, product yeah. then yeah, they would have to go with a different route. Right. Yeah. And flaxseed can combi- provide that binding as well. So that's that's an option too. And sometimes you even just add more water mm-hmm. because you, you need to incorporate that in. Now, a big thing with gluten-free baking is you want to weigh the ingredients versus measuring them. 
So this is something that gets definitely more scientific. Well, when you watch like the Food Channel <clears throat> or something like that, a lot of the high-ranking chefs that you see on there, they they weigh. They don't measure. They weigh so many grams or so many ounces, yeah. and then they pour it. For, they don't mess with a, a measuring cup. No, and it can provide a lot of inaccuracies. Now, not so much with regular gluten, good old gluten baking, because there is room for there is some room for error. However, when it comes to gluten free, if you want to make your own like sandwich bread, you do want to find a true true tried and trusted recipe there's a lot of them you can um find find them from the companies that sell gluten-free flour so like um bobs hodgson's mills there's probably another one um and then you want to make sure that you rely on temperature versus baking time so if it says cook bake to you know approximately 45 minutes but bake to 112 degrees or whatever you can use your thermometer would would you is it more accurate to use a bread machine or the trusted old oven, or does it make a difference as long as you get the temperature where it needs to be? I'm not really sure for gluten-free baking. I've never gluten-free baked, really, uh, bread, but I would and assume... Oven, ovens can be very off. If yeah. it says 400, it can be 450, or it can be 385. It can be all over the place. That's why people recommend putting an actual oven thermometer in the on the rack so they can actually see yeah, where think. they're at on that. Yeah. So that's an, that's another option, or you can do one of those deals that like you plug in, you just leave it in the oven, and yeah. then you it has a cord. Um, so yeah, you want to, I guess, get even more scientific with the gluten free baking. Whether you know you you weigh the ingredients, use the thermometer, you use a tried and true recipe. Don't go to the magazine stand and it says <laughs> the best gluten free bread you've ever had, and it was written by Becky who just started working for that magazine and has never baked in her life yeah. so sorry becky but that's that's what you want to do is find a a good recipe we've seen that in journalism uh where they don't know anything about what they're writing about but they make it eye-catching for publicity purposes right that's the hype yeah Speaking of eye-catching... Walton's Incorporated. Walt, I mean, hey, if you want snack sticks that taste good, Walton's can hook you up. Walton's has the coupon code to get you more for less, which is GROW50, G-R-O-W-5-0, to save 10% off your order of $50 or more. And they have a community called... Meatgistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished products. So Walton's has everything but the meats. They have uh, seasonings. They have meat grinders, mixers, sauces, thermometers. Stuffers. They do have thermometers. Um, they have. They probably have scales, like so yeah. you can measure weigh weigh your ingredients, all sorts of stuff. So they have decades of experience, and in that Meatgistics.com website, and just at Walton'sInc.com, you can find everything you need. And you want to use code GROW50 to save 10% off orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. Free shipping with that over $50. Hang out with us. We're going to go over when we come back just some moments away. Four things that we have stopped doing or have never done in the garden and why and it may help you out in your backyard. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Japanese beetles show up in summer feeding friends first party guest. Feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. 
protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from rescue. New this year, rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular rescue fly and yellow jacket traps. Learn more at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. Get $25 off your favorite hot bin model through August 15th. That's hot bin 26 gallon mini or the hot bin 52 gallon MK2. Use coupon code Joey22 at checkout to take $25 off your order at hotbincomposting-usa.com. Hey gardeners, it's that time of growing season, so let's start canning. Head over to Fleet Farm for all of your canning supplies and jam mixes. In one easy stop, find everything you need, like jars, lids, canners, strainers, racks, spatulas, and funnels from top brands like Ball & Kerr. Plus, pick up mixes, sugar, and more. When it comes to canning, get everything you need at your canning headquarters, Fleet Farm. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. The goal is to eliminate odors that attract ants, cockroaches, and other pests leaving your kitchen, bathroom, and other rooms in your house not only pest-free, but not smelling like chemicals or harsh cleaners. The Amazing Dr. Zymes Multi-Purpose Cleaner is a non-toxic, chemical-free, 100% environmentally friendly, gluten-free, hypoallergenic, and much more. It breaks down dirt and proteins, leaving a clean, oil-free, odor-free surface. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us. Tree diaper, a device, Holly, that will water your plants, whether you remember to or not. Yeah, tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The tree diaper is filled with water from when when it rains or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No overwatering or underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether they are down by the house, down the road, in the back 40. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find all the sizes they have available at treediaper.com. That's treediaper.com. Treediaper.com. <clears throat> that allows you to water those plants. Uh, and it works not only just on the ground, but you can do it in containers, your house plants, patio porch deck. They've got multiple sizes available. Treediaper.com. Well, there is number of practices, Holly, in the garden that people choose to do and not do for a variety of different reasons. Some is traditional, others is scientifically based, and then some simply just choose to do it even if there is no basis behind it for whatever reason that might be. We're going to go over a handful of things that we do not do in our garden and the reasons why. Yeah, so the first one is till, which by till we mean rototill, where you bust out your rototiller. You go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you uh you let those those uh, tilling tines do the tilling. Uh, it is very it, okay. This is what we don't do, and we're going to tell you why. So we're not going to yeah, please don't throw tomatoes at Joey. We're not going. We're not pointing fingers. This is just we don't till because one, there's the expense of renting or purchasing a tiller. 
two, the maintenance on such a, a unit, um, and three, the damage to the soil web that that machine can do. Now, true enough, if you go in there with a shovel or a spade and you work the soil, you do have soil disturbance, but not to the pulverizing potential that a tiller does with turning that hard clay-packed soil. If you have good soil, it wouldn't be clay-packed because you're adding nutrients, you're adding you know, organic material, you're adding compost into your garden, but you're turning whatever soil you have into a powder, disturbing all of the pathways that worms and other microscopic insects have created, as well as killing those uh, microscopic and worms and all of those things. So we don't till for that reason. Secondly, when you till, and it looks all pretty, because you've turned everything under and pulverized it and turned it to a powder and, and, you know, killed all the weeds, what you think. Two weeks later, many people wonder, well, why is the garden look more weedy now than it did ever before? Many weeds propagate from root cuttings, whether by natural or human. Uh, when that tiller tine goes in there and cuts those roots up, it cuts those roots up into dozens of pieces. And these plants are survivals, survivalists. They will regrow from the tiniest root follicle. So by removing the roots using a garden fork or a shovel, you're getting most of, if not all, the roots of that particular plant. But when you take the tiller in there and chop it all up, now you have just broadcasted that one plant that would have took 10 seconds to remove and you splattered it all across that pathway of where that tiller has gone and those plants are at. So instead of five weeds, you have now 50 or 60 that will begin to grow in several days to a couple of weeks. So we don't till for that reason as well, for uh, the propagation of weeds in which we don't want to. As well, it can stir up a lot of uh, dormant seeds. Some seeds can stay dormant in the soil for up to 80 years. So by disturbing the soil minimally, you're going to reduce the amount of potential seeds that you're kicking up to a growthing a, a growth depth in which it will start to grow. So that's why we don't till. Well, that's <clears throat> that's a really good explanation. So our second one is we don't grow corn. We have, and we don't do it anymore. We simply did it for video. Uh, ways to, um, you know, for, Educate. for uh, educational Educate, yeah. purposes on our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. You can go there, you can put in the search engine, growing homemade corn, or growing backyard corn, growing corn, uh, sweet corn, and we take you from the very beginning all the way through harvest in one video. Corn takes a tremendous amount of nutrients to grow. And at the peak of summer or this time of year, um, you can get corn from anywhere from 25 to 50 cents an ear at most grocery stores and even cheaper in bulk at a farmer's market. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot grow a ear of corn for 12 to 50 cents a piece. That is just not feasible for all the time, effort, water, fertilizer, soil working, planting, all of that stuff. Can't do it much easier to just go purchase it and support a local farmer or farmer's market or an independent grocery store rather than putting the effort in and trying to grow 8, 12, 25, 30 ears of corn when you could just grow tomatoes in that area and get 20 or 30 or 50 pounds of tomatoes in the same uh, square footage as that corn would take to grow. We do not grow broccoli or cauliflower, Holly. Why is that? Um, because we grew sad broccoli and cauliflower, if anything. We just grew the plant. We, we didn't just... even get anything out of no, it. No, there was like one time we had a teeny bit of broccoli. One time. One time. And maybe, After, yeah. I think maybe some cauliflower. Or Very, no, I no cauliflower, no. a little bit of broccoli. A little bit of broccoli. So, I don't know, for whatever reason, we cannot grow broccoli or cauliflower. We fail. Um, so, we decided that we're just not going to try. Stop trying. Stop trying. There are people that can grow that stuff. There are people that can, in your neighborhood, you can grow things that your neighbors can't for whatever reason. And there's things that your neighbors can grow that you can't for whatever reason. So, once you've 
uh, failed a couple of times or three or four or five, there's a certain point where you have to decide, should I keep trying, knowing that it's probably going to end up the same way? We tried to grow rutabagas for many years in the spring. Out of six tries, we had one good harvest, so we stopped growing them in the spring and strictly grow them in the fall. Uh, plant them here in zone 5A on August 1st, the tur- turnips and the rutabagas, and harvest them early uh, November, and they work out just fine. So we don't grow broccoli cauliflower because it's not worth the continued effort of trying to make it grow when it just simply will not, no matter which way, up, down, sideways, that we try to make it grow. That's our decision, and we can, um, you know, we can purchase it at a farmer's market or um, you know, wh- and, and and you may be trying to grow something that you really don't like. So think about that as well. I mean, we like broccoli and cauliflower, but there's people that we've talked to at Garden Talks so are like, I'm trying to grow this. Well, do you like this? Well, not really. So why are you trying to grow it? I mean, you you made me grow celery. I don't like celery. So well, celery is good for a no. lot of reasons. No, it's not. If you want to write into Holly, <laughs> care of the Garden Talk Radio at gmail dot com, and let her know how wonderful celery is for you we I don't really think it's that good for you i think that's a myth oh uh, well well we do not use pesticides or herbicides holly no we do not and <clears throat> maybe they have their place they have their place maybe there's times that we probably maybe possibly should have used them or you would think that would be the easier way and it probably is but we choose to live in harmony with our garden and our ecosystem hold hands with our fellow tomato plants and pepper plants and we just choose not to and that's our choice um yeah yeah so that, that's that um and and you know chemicals the the herbicides and the pesticides many places that our show is being broadcast on terrestrial radio is large big time farm country where that is how it's got to be done in order for things to grow in the in the field so and that's understandable yeah not knocking it just saying why we don't choose to use it because we ingest enough pesticides outside of the garden that uh, we think we've got our balance so the uh, next one is we try to not avoid problems that we are seeing develop in the garden so this happens um it's just like say maybe you bump your knee and you're like oh that hurt really bad and and then you know you ignore the problem and it doesn't get any better and then you eventually have to address that problem but if you and maybe it might it might have snowballed into something larger and if you just addressed it right away then you you would have it was an obvious problem you would have had less to less aftermath less now you got to now you got to pull out all eight zucchini plants now you have to get a new knee i don't know that's probably a bad metaphor but yeah so if you ignore one problem and it's an obvious problem and you're like well it might get better tomorrow or next week and it is pulling out the zucchini plants because you had the what's it called uh squash vine vine borer or squash uh uh, squash beetle or anything that uh powdery mildew potato beetle yeah potato beetle yeah tomato hornworm whatever it is whatever it is so when you ignore that problem initially it becomes a lot of times a larger problem. If it is something that you're like, I'm literally going to watch it for three days, that's different. But you do want to address it sooner than later, especially when it's obvious. Well, what is obvious to many of us uh, when we walk into our gardens, Holly, is that the Japanese beetles have uh, basically rented our gardens without paying us and are destroying the property and we can't get uh, repar- we can't we can't charge them for it. <laughs> no. No, no, no. no. Well, we can charge them for it because we're about to use phylum bioproducts, beetle gone on them. And, uh, yeah, if you're looking to successfully control beetles beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than beetle gone from phylum bioproducts derived from a naturally occurring soil bacteria. Beetle gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls those beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water, spray it on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. Do, 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 do. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, but the best part about the Beetle Gone, BeetleGone.com, is that you can use it around beneficial insects like 
be, uh, butterflies, bees, and ladybugs with no toxicity to water. Uh, Beetle Gone from phylumbioproducts.com. Uh, you go to beetlegone.com and you can purchase that product. Use coupon code GARDENTALK10. Save 10% on your order at BeetleGone.com. And you can uh, not only get your money back from the beetles not paying for rent on your garden, but you can salvage much of your vegetation, whether it's roses or beans or anything in between your trees. This will take care of them. BeetleGone.com, Garden Talk Radio 10, Garden Talk 10 to save 10% on your order. Garden Talk 10 to save 10% on your order at Beetlegone.com. When we come back, do not leave us, hang out with us. Author and garden columnist Steve Bender will be with us. He is known as the Grumpy Gardener. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. Just dial 1 800 927 show. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1 800 927 show. Do you have nuts or fruit in your yard? A nut wizard is a handy, effective tool that will pick up round or oval tree produce quickly and easily, leaving debris behind for a clean harvest. A nut wizard tool saves your back and your time. Visit nutwizard.com for more information. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10 TG22. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Are you bugged by bugs? You need naturally green products. No more bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA. No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, roaches, and ants, and more. No Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Visit natgreenproducts.com. You can enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Thanks for listening to The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Moments away, a.k.a. the Grumpy Gardener. Steve Bender will be with us, but first... You want to have your plants stay healthy and happy all growing season and indoors over winter. If you're doing that, Simple Grow is the answer to that question. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% Worm castings, not filler, plus castings. You promote your ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow All Natural Odor Free Worm Castings. There's only one ingredient, worm castings. No chemical or additives will seep into your food, and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor or outdoor use, you can buy it by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Find all the information about Simple Grow 100% worm castings and order at simplegrow.com. People will also grow, start their seeds in. 100% worm castings as well. So, Holly, let's go to the hotline, Proclamation Hotline, brought to you by Proclamation Goods, and bring in our guests for this week. Steve Bender is an award winning author, editor, columnist, and speaker with 38 years' experience as a garden editor, senior writer, and editor at large for Southern Living Magazine. Known as the Grumpy Gardener, he shares his horticultural wisdom with Southerners and garden enthusiasts across the country. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much. Nice to be here. Well, we thank you for taking time and uh, sharing some of your inf- your knowledge and information, not only with Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I will start with this. You do not care for Epsom salt, vinegar, dish soap, safe weed killer methods. Why is this? Is it not, would, is it not a safe method to use for killing weeds? 
uh, I, it's, it's not that it's not safe. It's just not very effective. It's one of these old wives tales. And you see it repeated again and again. If you go on social media, everybody has the same formula. Um, and they really don't look into what's in this formula for weed killer. Like, if you want to kill weeds, you want to kill them dead, right? You don't want to have them coming up in another 10 days. Right. Well, let's look at what's in this weed killer. First thing is Epsom salt. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate, which is a fertilizer for plants. It doesn't kill them. So if you want to make your weeds grow even better, put some Epsom salt on them. Um, dish soap just helps whatever you spray on weeds stick to it, and it kind of dries out the foliage. And then the only thing in here that really has an adverse effect on plants is vinegar because it's so acidic. But the problem is it only works on uh, annual weeds. Those are things, little grassy weeds and stuff that grow in cracks in the, in the driveway and in, uh, in, your, in you know, your front walk. And so what happens is yeah, you pour that on there and you see them all wilted the next day and you think, oh, well, I've done a great job. But if it's anything that is perennial, that has a any kind of a decent root system, uh, it will just, it will die down and in about 10 days it'll come right back up. Um, so it's just a really, it's a really dopey thing to do. Um, it just is not effective. Okay, great. You encourage people to fill in the bare areas of their lawn with sod versus seed. My sister is trying to grow grass in some bare areas right now with seed. She's having pretty good success. But why would it be a better remedy to use sod and any other tips around that? Okay. Well, it really depends on what kind of where you live and what kind of grass you have. Um, If you live uh, in a cool weather well, I should say um, an area that has uh, cold winters, um, it, you would be planting a cool weather grass. It would be like bluegrass or fescue. For those, yeah, it's fine. Uh, you can get bluegrass seed and you can get fescue seed. And you can sow it down there and water it and fill in the bare areas. That's just fine. Um but if you happen to be in a warm weather area like I do, um, those grasses don't grow here. And what we have is things like zoysia grass and St. Augustine grass. And those things are impossible to grow from seed. They, the seed just doesn't come up. So if you've got a small area of grass, rather than just uh, wait around forever for the grass that you have to spread in and, and fill in that bare spot, just go out and get yourself a piece of sod and stick it in the ground, water it, and be done with it. Good advice there. Now, um, I'll ask you for more advice, Steve. It, it's summer now, but soon fall is going to be coming to most of the country. What are some gardening mistakes to avoid as we go out and prepare our or begin to uh, establish our fall gardens? Okay. Uh, a couple of biggies. Uh, one is pruning. Um, if you have anything in your yard, a tree, a shrub, that blooms in the spring, do not prune it in the fall because lots of those plants have already set their flower buds in the fall. And if you go out and you prune them, and it doesn't matter, it could be azaleas, it could be lilacs, it could be forsythia, if you prune them in the fall, you're going to get no flowers in the spring. Second thing is um, fertilizer. About the only thing that you want to put fertilizer on in the fall would be a cool weather grass, like bluegrass or fescue. That's a really important time for them because they grow actively in uh, cooler weather. But for most, uh, for trees and shrubs, it's a really bad time because you don't want to encourage a lot of new growth that's not going to harden off in time for winter. Because if it doesn't 
hard enough in time for winter, you get a freeze, you get a frost, all that stuff dies. So uh, really uh, the main times for fertilizing your central lawns would be uh, spring and summer. Okay, great. So we are talking with Steve Bender, an award-winning author, editor, columnist, and speaker. Um, so since the pandemic, it seems like everyone is really into house plants, and that can that continues to to become more of a thing. Many of us fail at keeping them alive. I know myself included. Is there any reason where we may not be? You know, we may be successful gardeners out in the backyard, but in the house plant situation, maybe not so much. And you recommend maybe some house plants to avoid, and some tried and true favorites. Okay. Plants to avoid. Um, you don't want to try and grow something indoors that really only grows outdoors. Um, <laughs> a great example of this, I was one of the big box stores a couple of days ago, and I saw they had this whole display of Venus fly traps. And everybody loves the idea of Venus fly traps, you know. They have these traps that went up. A fly or a bug goes and lands on it and it closes with its teeth and digests the insects and everything. Those things are really hard to grow even outdoors. They require a very special environment. They have, they need full sun, they need boggy soil that always stays moist, that's absolutely devoid of nutrients. And so, does that sound like any place that you have in your house? I will guarantee you if you bring home a Venus flytrap, put it in a pot in your house, um, probably you've got uh, expected lifespan, uh, maybe two to three weeks. Um, people always do the wrong thing. So forget the Venus flytraps. Another uh, plant just as an example of what I said before about outdoor plants, trying them indoors, would be people up north. Uh, down here where I live in Alabama, one of our favorite plants is a gardenia because it has these incredibly fragrant, really pretty white flowers uh, in the summer. And it's a great plant for outside, but it hates the indoors. It doesn't like the dry air indoors. It's hard to give it enough light, and indoors, it will attract every horrible insect pest that you can ever imagine. Aphids, mealy bugs, white flies, scales. So these are the kind of plants that I call, not annuals, I call them momentarily. Because it's just moments before the time you bring them inside to the time you're throwing them out. Now, as far as good plants, uh, to have in your house. Uh, among my favorites are um, peace lily. Uh, I think it's a wonderful plant. Takes low light, nice flowers, grows really well inside. Then there's the old favorite, the snake plant or mother law's tongue, which again takes low light, low humidity, does great, it's hard to kill. And a third one I would mention would be uh, Chinese evergreen which is aglaonema, and again, low light, low humidity, doesn't take very much care, hard to kill. Good list of do's and don'ts there on what to bring in and or what to have in your house and what not to. Uh, we have to ask you, Steve, why are you known as the grumpy gardener? Because uh, when people ask me questions, I tell them the truth. And um, like some people ask me things that gets me... Uh, you know, a little grumpy. Look, I had this one person who uh, she emailed me this question. And she says, "Oh, I was just given this terrarium with plants in it uh, as a gift. How do I keep all the plants from outgrowing the terrarium?" So I responded, "Well, what plants are in the terrarium?" And she says, "Well, I don't know. I mean." That's like going to the emergency room, right? Right. And, and the guy comes up and he says, okay, what's wrong with you? He, well, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of feeling out of sorts. Well, do you feel have a fever? No, not really. Do you have a rash? Well, I haven't looked. Uh, is your sore throat? Um, no, I don't think so. 
Um, so, <laughs> you know, um, you gotta, you gotta help me out here. I mean, it's a two way street, right. you know, I try to give you the right answer, but you gotta, you gotta handle it on your end. I, you know, uh, I don't like to make up answers. So, um, uh, I really need a teeniest bit of information. I, I'm sure uh, you've got. I I, can answer your question. I'm sure you've gotten this one. My, I think my plants are dying. What do you think's wrong with them? Uh, <laughs> that they're dying. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I think they're really dying. But the, uh, the, the simple answer to all of that, you know, is plastic flowers. Yeah. <laughs> um, just get plastic flowers. They're cheap. They last forever. You never have to water them. I, uh, you, you know. It doesn't matter what kind of light they have. You never have to miss them for humanity. Just get plastic flowers. Yeah, yeah that would be the simplest. And, and if you've got problems, that would probably be the answer. Well, Steve, we, uh, greatly, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered us and the knowledge you've uh, given not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. How can people find out about you, find your column, find your books? How, how can we do that? Well, let me see. You can contact the CIA, the FBI, the KGB for <laughs> really detailed files. But the simplest way um, is if you go on Facebook um, and just uh, search for The Grumpy Gardener, um, you'll see I have a, Gr- a Grumpy Gardener Facebook page in which anybody anywhere can post a question and I will answer it with 110% guaranteed accuracy or your money back. Um, there's another, you can uh, look in Southern Living Magazine every month, and I have my Grumpy Gardener feature in there. Uh, or again, I, I answer just a lot of questions on a lot of different subjects. Or... Um, on if you go to Amazon, you can find my Grumpy Gardener book, the perfect gift for every occasion. Well, Steve, we thank you for the time you've offered us and uh, the knowledge you've shared with us. It's, it's meant a lot. Thank you very much for that. Well, thanks a lot. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com, use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit blueribbonorganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. It's a struggle to find fruit that isn't a disappointment or a waste of money, especially peaches at the grocery store. You bring them home, they turn mealy and gross. Well, Tree Riot Fruit Company has the answer. They deliver fruit straight from the farm, obsessed with quality, so you can actually experience the joy of a great-tasting fruit. Love Georgia peaches? Tree Ripe delivers the best peaches you'll ever eat directly from the farm within days of being picked. Peach season starts June 15th and goes through August 4th. In July, they also deliver Michigan blueberries. You can find them at over 400 peach stops events throughout the midwest or have fruit delivered directly to your home all the event details and ordering information can be found at their website tree-ripe.com an extra bonus for you listeners get 10 percent off your first purchase when you order online only tree-ripe.com by using coupon code holly 10 h-o-l-l-y-1-0 a little bit of summer is what the whole year is all about barbecues parties with friends the fun is endless unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from coversandall.com they have fabric choices for days that are 100 waterproof coated to protect against sun and can be custom designed for any size or shape and placing or removing them easy peasy visit coversandall.com and use code garden 25 at checkout to save 25 percent on your purchase Thanks for listening to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. 
The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rat, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Oh, one more segment segment left here on the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. It's for you. Your questions are answers. You got one. Send it on over. GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call toll-free, coast-to-coast at 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. That is the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet in the stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited to order yours now at Proclamation Goods. Dot com. All right. And a number of questions come in this week. This question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. Can you eat yellow cucumbers, Holly? I hate to just throw them out. Um, yeah, no. I mean, they're they're very bitter at this point. If you are only growing one kind and there's not, you know, any any other one. Um, you can try to save the seeds from it, but if you have livestock, pigs, chicken, etc., they would eat them, or you can compost them. But you can try it, but they're very, they're very bitter. There, there's a reason why they are yellow, and they are past their prime. So always make sure that uh, the cucumbers and zucchinis are uh, one of those plants of, oh, I see it, I'll get it tomorrow, and then it is like you know the size of a small car by the time you get out to the garden the next morning. So always it's there's nothing here here's the thing with cucumbers and zucchinis since we're on this topic it's not a bad thing or a wrong thing to harvest them when they were small smaller than what you would think that bigger doesn't always mean better if you you know if they're half the size that you normally would pick them you can pick them there they're actually better the smaller they are and while picking them when they're smaller you're removing them from the plant and causing the plant to produce more and you'll have more to harvest. So it works uh, It works all the way around on that. All right. Can you please tell me how long to leave lights on each day for germination of my plants? Yeah, so once the seeds are planted, then lights do not to be, need to be turned on until the seeds begin to come through the soil. So at that point, then it's tw- 10 hours on, 14 hours off. That is what we do, yeah. and it's worked very well. We use the Happy Leaf LED grow lights, and um, you can certainly get yours at happyleafled.com. Use uh, coupon code Joey Holly and get 10% off your order of $90 or more. All right, so our next question is more of a comment, uh, I guess. Um, this broadcast is nothing but ads. Yuck. Well, uh, we're going to give a little behind the scenes here of those of you who diligently listen to the program. Uh, the ads are what pay for us to be on the air on your favorite radio station and radio stations across the country. We are on 18 of them this year and hope to expand that number in 2023. Uh, compared to other Garden Talk radio shows, our program has a fraction of the advertising time that some do. There are some Garden, and garden Talk radio shows, and I will not name them. I have listened to them, and they are hard to listen to. Out of a 60-minute program, you are very, very lucky if you get 32 to 34 minutes of actual garden content on that program between traffic reports and sports and bottom-of-the-hour news and what's coming up after the show and all this other stuff. Uh, we, we We work very hard to only have about 12 to 14 minutes of actual advertising time in the hour, which is unheard of in a Garden Talk radio program of any magnitude in 2022 or 2023. So we work very hard. We've got great sponsors that believe in what we do and pay the advertising uh, cost in order for us to be on the air. So we don't have to have 30 minutes of advertising or other fill-in-the-blank stuff in order to make the show possible. So um, if you don't like the ads, uh, 
download the podcast and skip them. So I'm just. <laughs> yes, go ahead. I mean, do, does, do, do people like this like write into their local news station? Like, I, you know, there's too many ads too on the, ads the, the my news. favorite NBC yeah. show on. You know, yeah. I, I, don't know. I, I don't even uh, even in streaming. There's ads. Yeah, so. you know, there's there's uh. there's always a few bumps in the road here. Yeah. All right. Uh, I like your 60 second garden tip on your website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, about putting pine cones around the base of my container to keep animals mainly cats, from turning it into a litter box. My question is, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. How do I clean the pine cones so they won't contain, con- contaminate my soil with diseases or bugs before placing them around my plants? Yeah, so you can, you know, we've not had any problems, but if you are concerned, you can take and soak them in a bucket of soapy water, not super soapy water, but just for about 10 minutes, kind of shake them around and then rinse them off and then you can let them dry out and then the bugs would probably be gone. Yeah, the bugs would be yeah. gone and, and you you know, rinse them off. Uh, but you, not necessarily, you don't have to do it, but if it gives you peace of mind and that's what you want to do, have at it. Uh, not going to not gonna hurt anything. All right, where is a good place to get garlic outside of buying it from the store? I'm attempting to or wanting to plant it for the first time this fall in my garden. Thank you. You can get it from a farmer's market. You can get it from a garlic supplier. Um, Jung Seeds has yeah, garlic. Jung Seeds. Uh, they've just got the garlic supply in at jungseeds.com. That's J U N G S E E D.com. And uh, if you want to save 10% on your order, you can use coupon code 10 TG2210, TG, Tom Gary, TG22 at checkout. And uh, you can get your seeds that way. All right, Holly, next question. Next question is, so um, <laughs> end of last week, I posted a picture to my Instagram and Facebook about how when I got home from, I don't know, I went to the gym in the store, Joey greeted me with a jar of compost juice because he was excited about it and I was excited about it too. And so we had a couple of questions come in about what is compost juice and what do you do with it? Well, compost juice is the byproduct uh, of compost uh, and some methods of making compost uh, creates a liquid which is what this is and it is the byproduct with the um uh, hot bin composting unit hot bin composting dash usa.com uh we have it on our porch and there is the, in the manufacturing makeup of the device it will allow the liquid to go to the bottom and then you can drain it out as a nutrient feed for your plant. You just catch it in a mason jar or a cup or a bowl or whatever and you water it, you can dilute it, you can pour it right over the plants. I've been taking it to the front yard and putting it around the tomato plants and it's just a, a, a free fertilizer is what it is and to me it doesn't smell. Now it's not something you should drink or anything like that but it is uh, compost tea, essentially, is what that is. And the hot bin composting allows that. If you are m- making compost in a traditional ground method, like on the ground, you're not going to see this. It's going to pem- per- penetrate into the soil underneath that pile, and you're never going to capture, uh, be able to capture any of this. Uh, just so you know, at hot bin composting uh, dash usa.com you can get $25 off your uh, favorite unit either the mini 26 gallon or the hot bin 52 gallon uh, by using coupon code joey j-o-e-y-2-2 that expires the 15th of august so you can still purchase and get a little bit knocked off and it's a very compact unit we talked about this a little heavy uh, last week in segment one and um it works really well, very compact. It does makes compost. The the primary focus of the unit is it makes compost in 30 to 90 days, and it, it does do that. And you get the bonus of the compost tea or the, 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 the compost juice, whatever you want to call that. So that that's something uh, it's very unique, and it works very well. But, uh, yeah, there's a number of things in which you can do with it. Now, I wouldn't take the compost juice or the compost tea. I would not necessarily do it 100% if you're going to feed your house plants. I would do it probably 25% with water and make sure that gets worked into the soil because it's you know it, it will have some odor 
but it's more dominantly used. Uh, what we're going to dominantly use it for is in the outdoor garden. So anything else you got to add for that? You want to add to that? No, I don't think so. Um, compost, the compost juice is, is a nice fertilizer. And I, this is our first time using a, a compost Composter, um, composter, <laughs> which is ten feet from the kitchen. Yes, and I I like it because especially, you know, before we would keep a bucket in the house for the compost, the cold, cold, cold compost. compost, yeah. Um, and that's fine. But even earlier today, I had some tea bags, and that I had made some sun tea, and then I had I don't know maybe a banana peel in there or something, and I you know said Joe, why don't you take this outside quick, and it was right there, so it's very convenient. Well, with that said, the conveniency of this program is just about over. We are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today or want to revisit it? Hey, you can do that by going to your uh, going to your favorite podcast platform and uh, or your favorite search engine and typing in the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Uh, we are on multiple platforms all over the wonderful world web uh, of the Internet. And you can go to our website parent website the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com the season six tab at the top of the page or just send us an email garden talk radio at gmail.com and we will send you a link to this program you can also check out past shows uh, underneath that link and throughout the website and the coupon codes for everything we've talked about is listed there under the money tab at the top of the page if you uh tune in next week holly do you know what next week is it's august it's our 25th show of the season, <laughs> and it's our 200th broadcast of this program. Shut up. 200 broad, 200th wow. broadcast. Uh, we started the program March 3rd, 2017, on one station in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, six plus years later, we are at 200 original broadcasts at the completion of next week's show. We need a cake or something. We need a cake. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, our topics for next week is going to be good bugs that you will find in your home, yes, as well as proper storage of your harvest. Our guests will be Allison Levy and Scott Serrano, authors, and will answer your garden questions. So until next week for... Holly Baird. I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.